Ever since Logitech bought Loop Deck, I've been waiting for them to come out with some kind of a control device. And I was really worried that it was just gonna be another Loop Deck clone. Well, they finally announced something and I've got some pretty good news. Before we get started, I want to address the elephant in the room, all these boxes right here. I'd love to say that it was for something cool, like a giveaway, or I have a sick-ass collection of shark teeth, but it's actually just a prize that my wife and her friends won. It's a ton of alcohol. And if anyone's ever tried to move around a ton of alcohol, well, it's heavy, it weighs a ton. So it's staying in the shot. We're gonna ignore it from here on out, and let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, and today we are talking about Loop Deck's brand new device, the MX Creative Console. In the box, you actually have two separate devices. You have the Creative Keypad and the Creative Dial Pad. You have a USB-C to USB-C cable, a stand that's meant for the keypad, and the documentation. So let's have a look at the keypad first, and you're going to see that it has nine pressable keys, and they are in fact pressable. They're not a touchscreen with haptics like the Loop Deck Live. At the bottom, you have two navigation buttons, so you can switch pages in your profile. On the back, you'll see nice rubber footing on either side, and where you plug in the USB-C cable. The dial pad connects wirelessly, so you'll never actually plug it in. On the front, you'll see you have one single large dial, and it is a truly smooth dial. It's really nice to turn. On the top right, you have a scroll wheel, equally smooth, very nice, and it's tactile as well. And then you have four customizable buttons, two on the top, two on the bottom. On the very top of the device, you have the power switch. And on the back, you'll see the button that connects to up to three different devices using the Bluetooth. And underneath this panel here is actually where the batteries go. Yes, this does take two AAA batteries it is not rechargeable in any way and it's also got that same rubber footing that was on the keypad and then if you look at the stand on the bottom you have all rubber footing and then at the back you have a place to run your cable i don't really know why they only made this stand big enough to hold one of the devices why they didn't have it big enough to hold both or have two so you could put them both up but i will say that considering the predecessor to this was loop deck the stand technology is a lot better than loop deck ever had the build quality of these are really nice it's actually made out of 72 percent recycled plastic and low carbon aluminum but it feels like a really solid plastic. It doesn't feel chintzy at all. It doesn't feel like it's going to break on you in any way, shape, or form. Hopefully it doesn't break as my strong hands handle it. Nope. See, still good. The creative keypad also well built. The two buttons down here, nice and clicky. Very good. The keys up here also pretty good. They don't press in quite as much as the stream deck, I don't think, but still way better than the haptic feedback on the loop decks. So yes, just by looking at the MX creative console, you are going to see some similarities to the old loop deck. The design of the icons on the keypad's LED screens, the buttons that are on the dial pad, are very similar to the ones on the Loop Deck Live. And you are going to find some familiar things in the software solution that came from the Loop Deck's original designs. But to me, these were the things that made Loop Deck actually good. And what I feel like Logitech did is whittle away all the annoying stuff and just keep the good stuff. So to set up the Logitech MX Creative Console, you need to set up the Logi Options Plus app. This is software that they use for some of their other peripherals, but they've actually built up the UI so it can be included. So in the software, you'll actually find the Creative Keypad and Creative Dialpad as separate items. But you're also going to see a third item pop up as well and we'll talk about that in just a minute so when you select either device let's look at the creative keypad first you'll see that it gives you a chance to customize your keys it comes with a default profile that's just system controls but using their marketplace you can actually download even more things and you will on your first time setting it up get a prompt to actually connect plugins for different applications that you already have that is provided that there is a plugin for the application right now the software is in beta so there's only a limited number of apps that actually work with it but when i got to talk to logitech at the demonstration they said that a lot more will be ready in time for launch. So what kind of applications can you expect to be compatible with this? If you ever use the Loop Deck, basically every single plugin that was available for that will be available for this. There's just a matter of actually reimagining these plugins so they actually fit to this device rather than the old Loop Deck. But you will be starting out with some big ones because Adobe has collaborated with Logitech and they have plugins for every single one of the items in the Creative Suite. And they are native to the MX Creative Console and they've actually done something really interesting that they never did on Loop Deck. So when you choose which plugin to install for your applications, you're actually going to get a prompt. And that prompt's going to let you select a default profile that's actually just the most popular controls, or you can pick something more specialized. So when I was setting up the plugin for Adobe Premiere Pro, they actually had a separate profile that was just for color correction, and you could have selected that instead, or downloaded both. So it'll be interesting to see once vendors start coming in to make their plugins, and if independent people come in to make their own plugins, what options you might have in front of you. And another interesting thing is when you set these plugins up, you're setting them up per individual device. So 
you don't necessarily have to put the same plug in on both devices. You can actually make these things work independently of each other. So you can leave the dial pad with all the normal system controls while the keypad is doing something completely different. Another really cool feature in the software is the contextual dial. So what that means is depending on what you select on the keypad, it can actually change what the controls are for your big dial. So for example, the default function on the dial right now is actually system volume. But if I were to select the screen brightness and actually start to turn the dial, the brightness would adjust. Then when I click the screen brightness off, the dial goes back to the original default. And you're gonna be able to do this with so many controls over so many different profiles as you go forward. It's pretty cool. And we touched on it a little bit before, but the MX Creative Console has a third virtual device, and that's the Actions Ring. And you can trigger the Actions Ring by pressing an Assign button on either of the devices. It's defaulted to be the bottom right button on the Creative Dial Pad, and it'll bring up on screen for you eight additional controls right at your fingertips. And by fingertips, I mean mouse clicks. I'm gonna make a full video about the setup of the Logitech MX Creative Console once the software has gone live to everybody. That way I can walk you through all the steps and show you everything that they have to offer. So stay tuned for that. That, but if it's already happened by now, you'll probably see a link pop up right around here. The other thing I really like about the devices being separate is you can change your layout at your setup to be whatever you want it to be. A lot of people will just have both devices off to one side and treat it kind of like one individual device. Other people might want to take the two-handed approach and have one device on either side of the keyboard so they can work without the keyboard. I know when I was testing this at the Logitech event, that was actually the thing that was the most comfortable for me. Or you may find that if you're not editing, you don't have any use for the dial pad to be out in front of you at all, so you can tuck that away while you're just using the keypad. Lots of different options and you could just completely make it your own. Now, when it came to actually using the device with other applications, it was very intuitive. I will admit that I haven't actually used the Adobe Creative Suite for quite some time. Logitech actually gave me a one month subscription just so I could test out stuff out of the box. But something that I think control devices like this do really well is actually bridge the gap between other editing softwares. If you have a well-made plugin, you don't have to go hunting for all the little hotkeys and functions that each one has in different areas. And even if you don't have a very well-made plugin, you can figure all that stuff out and customize your profile to do whatever you want. So I could be working on Adobe Premiere Pro and then go over to DaVinci Resolve, set up my promos to look virtually identical and be able to seamlessly go between the two. So let's nitpick this thing a little bit because obviously nothing's perfect. When I'm looking at this dial pad, I feel like I'm missing at least one more dial. Now to take you behind the scenes of my workflow because I still have to edit for myself, I don't use the dials an awful lot on my Loop Deck Live, but when I do photo editing, especially when I'm making thumbnails and stuff like that, I actually use upwards of three. One for zooming, one for brush width and one for text size. I'm not a high level photo or video editor by any means, so I don't use all of the things that I'm sure some other people do. And for the dial that I can use for one function and the scroll wheel that I can use for zooming, I can pretty much do most of what I do. And when you think about the contextual dial, I could theoretically click brush width and then adjust it click text size and then adjust it, but it just slows down the workflow just a teeny tiny bit. It's not the end of the world by any means, but it's just something that I'm noticing. And what remains to be seen because we're still in the beta version of the software is how good the additional plugins are gonna be. I can say they're good for Adobe. And from what I know about the Loop Deck Marketplace, which is basically gonna be a copy of itself with the Logitech Marketplace, I'm sure it's gonna be fine, but there's just a lot of things right now that out of the box I can't test so I can properly recommend to you. The Logitech MX Creative Console comes in two colors, graphite and pale gray, and it's coming in at $199.99 US. Now just comparing, this is the exact same price as the Stream Deck Plus. Now while Stream Deck has a lot of advantages just being such a big ecosystem device itself, Logitech also has a couple of advantages, just the layout customizability of it with the two small devices. It's something that you can't really do with a Stream Deck. You're not sliding it around your desk and having it next to you so you can press buttons, then putting it back. It's going to be pretty much where it is all the time, meaning that if you want to use it, you're going to have to reach for it and not have it at your side like you can with Logitech. But one thing that I found really interesting, it's actually $70 cheaper than you can find the Loop Deck Live today. And in fairness, the Loop Deck Live actually offers a lot more functionality out of it with more buttons and more dials. But I'll be honest, from everything from Loop Deck that they actually gave to you, it's worth the sacrifice of a few dials and a few buttons for the price. But what do you think about the Logitech MX Creative Console? I'm really interested to hear your thoughts. Why don't you go put those down below in the comments? And while you're down there, make sure to hit the like and subscribe, hit the bell so you know when I have new videos coming out, especially the setup tutorial tutorial for this device. But that's where I'm going to leave you. Why don't you check out one of these videos right here, a couple of other control devices you can have a look at. And until next time, my friends, let's get to work. But I've been really scared that it was just going to be another Loop Deck Chrome.